In this video, we're going to define the absolute dexedrima of functions. A function f has an absolute minimum at c. If f of c is less than or equal, to f of x for all x. And we have an absolute maximum at c. If f of c is greater than or equal to f of x for all x. And when I say all x, I of course mean all x in the domain of the function. Having defined the absolute minimum and the absolute maximum, which are collectively known as the absolute exedrema, let me make some observations. First, they might not exist. There are plenty of functions that do not have an absolute minimum or an absolute maximum. The linear function f of x equals x doesn't have a maximum. The further to the right you go, the bigger it gets. It doesn't have a maximum value. And similarly, the further to the left you go, the smaller it gets. It doesn't have a minimum value. The sum g of x equals x squared has a minimum value here but it doesn't have a maximum value. It goes up to infinity. Um, H of x equals negative, the absolute value of x is the opposite. It has a maximum value here, but no minimum value. It just keeps getting smaller and smaller. So that's the first important observation. Two, absolute dexedrema might not be a unique. And that might violate our kind of intuition of what the word absolute means. I mean, you wouldn't say someone is the absolute best at something if he's actually only tied as being the best. But look, for example, at the sign of x, and then go back and 
and look at this definition. Do you see these inequalities aren't strict? A minimum doesn't have to be less than all of the other values, just less than or equal to. The maximum doesn't have to be greater than all of the other values, just greater than or equal to. The sign achieves its maximum value of one here and here and here, in fact, infinitely often. And all of these infinitely many points where the sign is equal to one, they're all absolute max. Maxima. And similarly, the minimum value the sign takes on is negative one. It takes on that value infinitely often, and every one of those is an absolute minimum. One more observation in this introductory video. These absolute extrema depend on the domain. If you change the domain, you change the extrema. Let's go back to this example. F of x equals x. On the real number line, this function has no absolute extrema. But if you only look at this on the interval from zero to two, suddenly there's an absolute minimum and an absolute maximum. X squared had an absolute minimum here and no absolute maximum. If you look at this on the interval from one to two, now your absolute minimum is somewhere else and you have an absolute maximum. Likewise this, there is no absolute minimum on the real number line. If we only look at the interval from negative three to three though, we now have two absolute minima, one here and one here. And I know I said this was the last observation. I was wrong, one more. And this observation is so special that it gets its own name. It's called the extreme value theorem. And the extreme value theorem says that if you're looking at a function on a closed interval, then assuming that function is continuous on the interval, it has at least one 
absolute max. And it has at least one absolute min. And now this video really is at an end.